Hey everybody, welcome to In Step With God. I'm your host, JT Martin. And just a quick reminder, this channel is about, you know, observing the history of the Christian tradition and how different theological positions developed over time. And so today we're going to be looking at um, one, another group uh, from the first century and uh, a, little, a couple of centuries before that. Um, we're going to be looking at the Pharisees. This is a group that is fairly um, negatively represented within the biblical story. And so we will be, you know, kind of taking a more holistic view, you know, and what some of the different thought processes were of this group, as well as some of the other things we've brought up in previous videos. So before we get started, uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos drop. So to begin, um, the biblical presentation of Pharisees, like, like I've already said, is fairly negative. There are a couple of individuals who stand out, Nicodemus, uh, Gamaliel, and one or two others. But in general, they are represented as being a group of people who were extremely judgmental, um, people who had almost no compassion, they just, they, they were represented as being very legalistic and just, they didn't really care about people. Um, and so that's the biblical perspective and that's how the Bible represents them. And we're going to be looking at, you know, well, what does, you know, other historical records say? And maybe the group that we see in the Bible is just a small part of this group's history. So without a further ado, let's get into it. The Pharisees were a group of Jewish scholars and scribes who arose out of the doubt surrounding the religious validity of the second temple's construction in 505. 515 BCE, primarily motivated by the fact that it was built under foreign authority and power, not under the kingdom of Israel. So the Pharisee tradition lasted until 70 CE in official capacity, but it was the framework from which rabbinic Judaism, which is, you know, kind of the major tradition that we see for a great span of what uh, history is in the common era. Um, and, and so the Pharisees, they differed heavily from another group that I will be making another video about called the Sadducees. And the, their biggest disagreement was on, you know, the authority of the Torah. The Sadducees held the conviction that only the written word could be trusted, and they primarily used the Greek, Greek Septuagint for their interpretations and learning, alongside an education on Greek philosophy. Now then, the reason this caused a lot of strife between the two groups was because the Pharisees viewed the Torah as being official both in writing and in oral tradition. Um, it was during this period of time that parts of the written canon were likely established, uh, especially the writings and the prophets, because that's where most of the controversy was. During the Second Temple period, the majority of the controversy between Pharisees and Sadducees wasn't over the Torah necessarily, it was over the writings and the prophets, which were largely oral traditions at this time. Um, and so... That is, you know, the, the big controversy. And again, to kind of summarize all of that information, the Pharisees believed oral tradition had as much authority as written tradition and written law, whereas the Sadducees only believed that written law held authority. Um, when Roman authority became part of the Jewish life in the first century BCE up through uh, the fall of the Roman Empire, the Pharisees were the ones who pushed back. They were separate. And, and in fact, the word Pharisee comes from a, a, the Greek and Latin words meaning to push, to separate. 
Um, and, and so the Pharisees, they didn't want Roman authority, which is kind of funny because the Pharisees were the ones who brought the Romans in to dismantle the Hasmonean dynasty, which lasted from 140 BCE to 37 BCE. And this dynasty was how the Sadducees developed. And this was, you know, their source of power. And I'll be getting to the specifics on that in another video. And so the Sadducees were like, hey, we're okay with being under Roman authority. We'll get along with them, you know, because they, ha they, they were just, they were more willing to be under non-Jewish authority. And so with that history in place, let's look specifically at some of the controversy within the Pharisees at the time of the New Testament, especially with regard to the life of Jesus. So in the first century, there were two dominant schools of Pharisaic thought. The followers of Beit Hillel, which I have already talked about in, in, in a little bit of fashion, and the followers of Shammai. And, you know, as I've mentioned previously, Shammai was originally a student under Hillel. And as Hillel was growing more advanced with age, he, Shammai gained more authority and influence among the different scribes and teachers. The largest difference between Shammai and Hillel is that Hillel followed the tradition of progressively interpreting the Torah with generosity, which is closer in line to the oral traditions and the oral thoughts and practices of the Pharisees during the 6th century BCE. Whereas Shammai was much harsher. If it, he was a lot more explicit, he was a lot more literal, and his followers were as well. Shammai was a much more legalistic than Hillel was. And so from this, we can kind of see how, you know, the, um, the Pharisees that Jesus normally dealt with in his ministry life, they would have been his peers, you know, maybe a decade or two older than him, but generally, you know, kind of in that range of 30 to 50. Um, kind of like, you know, most pastors in modern day, they're somewhere in that range of, you know, on the really young side, maybe in their low 30s, upper 20s, and typically they'll, you'll see, you know, the average everyday pastor anywhere between 40 and 50. Um, and, and there are exceptions, there are pastors much older, but generally speaking, that's going to be a rough average age of a pastor in modern day America. And so that's the age group Jesus would have been working with in his ministry. And I'll talk about this more when we get into, you know, the life and the ministry of Jesus explicitly. But it, from what the Bible says and from the biblical descriptions that I've talked about in the beginning of the video, it's not hard to imagine that the Pharisees Jesus was dealing with were largely followers of Shammai and not followers of Hillel because... Shammai had the dominant authority. Hillel had kind of fallen out of, he, he was dead. He wasn't, you know, preaching and practicing anymore. And so it, it's not hard to imagine that the picture we see is not, you know, in, in the biblical text, a whole representative of Pharisaic thought, but rather it, it's the Pharisaic thought Jesus dealt with the most in opposition to what he was teaching, and that would have been um, the, the school of Shammai and his followers. Um, thank you guys so much for, you know, liking, subscribing, and just keeping this channel going. Um, I'm super excited for where this is going and for, you know, the different topics we're going to be talking about. Um, just to kind of, you know, re, replant, you know, what the vision for this is, is that um, we will eventually move forward out of, you know, the story of the early church and, and the foundation of Christianity, and we'll move through the different periods of time and the different major events, and we'll look at, you know, the ecumenical councils 
Um, we'll look at how the papacy was started. We'll look at, you know, the, the broad strokes of Christian history and theological development. And then when, once we get to the Reformation, we'll start tackling, you know, specific schools of Christian thought in modern day and where they developed from. Um, that's the vision that we can look at, you know, the history of, of theological development and the history of Christianity and learn from it, especially for those of us who are Christians, you know, we can see our best and worst moments in this. Um, again, thank you so much. If you want more information, there's going to be an encyclopedia link from Britannica in the bottom of the description. Uh, please consider checking out my Patreon or my blog. Um, both those links are going to be in the description as well. Thanks so much. God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.